My beloved child, listen closely, for I am speaking directly to your heart today. I see the tears you have shed, the burdens you carry, and the dreams you've held close, even when the world has tried to tear them away. Know this, I am with you in every moment, in every struggle, and in every victory. I am the light that guides your path, the strength that lifts you when you are weary, and the love that never fails. You are not alone, though at times the weight of your trials may make you feel as if you are. I am here, right beside you, holding your hand through every storm. I have seen the challenges you face, the moments when you've questioned your worth, and I say to you now, you are precious in my sight, fearfully and wonderfully made. There is nothing you could do that would make me love you less, and nothing you must do to earn my love. It is yours, freely given, forever and always. When the world seems dark and the future uncertain, remember that I am the God of all creation. I spoke the stars into existence, and I have a plan for your life that is far greater than you can imagine. The trials you face today are not the end of your story. They are but a chapter in a grand narrative of redemption hope, and victory. Trust in me, for I am working all things together for your good. Even when you cannot see the way, know that I am making a way. Do not be discouraged by the voices that tell you that you are not enough, that you will never succeed, or that you are too far gone. Those are lies from the enemy, seeking to steal your joy and your peace. But I am the truth, and in me you have the victory. I have called you by name. You are mine. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment shall be condemned. Stand firm in the knowledge that you are covered by my grace, shielded by my righteousness, and held in my everlasting arms. Your past does not define you. The mistakes, the regrets, the moments of weakness, bring them to me, for I have already nailed them to the cross. In me, you are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Walk in the freedom I have given you, unburdened by shame or guilt. Your future is bright, filled with promise and purpose. I am leading you into a season of restoration where the years the locusts have eaten will be restored to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. I have great plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. But remember, my child, that my timing is perfect. Do not rush ahead and do not lag behind. Walk with me, hand in hand, trusting that I am guiding your steps. When the path is unclear, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge me, and I will direct your paths. You are my beloved, and I am well pleased with you. Keep your eyes fixed on me 
and let your heart be at peace. I am the author and finisher of your faith, and I will bring to completion the good work I have begun in you. Rest in my love, knowing that I am for you, and if I am for you, who can be against you? Now rise up, my child, in the strength of my spirit. Go forth with boldness and courage, knowing that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. The battle is not yours, but mine, and I have already secured the victory. Walk in it, live in it, and let my light shine through you to a world in need. You are loved beyond measure, and I am proud to call you my own. Keep pressing forward, keep believing, keep trusting, for the best is yet to come. I am your God, and you are my child, and nothing can ever change that. Type Amen if you receive this and walk today in the fullness of my love and blessing. My child, as you move forward, remember that every step you take is a step of faith. Do not be disheartened by the challenges that arise, for they are but opportunities for you to witness my power in your life. I am the God who parts seas, who brings down walls, who makes a way where there seems to be no way. I am the God of the impossible, and I am with you. When you face obstacles, do not see them as barriers, but as stepping stones. Each one is designed to elevate you, to bring you closer to the fulfillment of the dreams I have placed in your heart. Do not shrink back in fear, for I have not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Stand firm in this truth and know that I am your shield, your strong tower, your ever-present help in times of trouble. There will be moments when you feel weak, when the journey seems too long and the road too rough. In those moments, remember that my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you are weak, I am strong. Lean into me and I will carry you through. My grace is sufficient for you and my power is at work within you, even when you cannot see it. Do not be afraid of the future, for I hold it in my hands. I have already walked the path before you, and I am preparing the way. Trust in my timing, for it is perfect. Trust in my plans, for they are good. Trust in my love, for it never fails. I know the desires of your heart, and I am working to bring them to pass in ways that will exceed your expectations. Be patient, my child, for the best is yet to come. You are my masterpiece, created for good works that I have prepared in advance for you to do. Do not underestimate the value of what you bring to the world. You are a light in the darkness, a beacon of hope to those who are lost and hurting. Let your light shine and do not hide it under a bushel. The world needs the gifts and talents I have placed within you. Use them boldly and without fear for I am with you. When you face opposition, remember that it is not you they oppose, but the one who sent you. Do not take it personally, but instead, 
Rejoice that you are counted worthy to suffer for my name. Know that I am using every trial, every difficulty, to shape you into the person I created you to be. I am refining you like gold, removing the impurities, so that you may reflect my glory more clearly. Forgive those who have wronged you, and do not hold on to bitterness or resentment. These things only weigh you down and prevent you from moving forward into the fullness of what I have for you. Let go of the past and embrace the future with open arms. I am doing a new thing in your life. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Trust me and walk forward in faith. Remember that you are never alone. I am with you always to the very end of the age. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. When you pass through the waters, they will not sweep over you. I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I have called you by name. You are mine. Let your heart be at peace, knowing that I am for you, and nothing can separate you from my love. Not height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate you from the love I have for you in Christ Jesus. Rest in this truth and let it be the anchor of your soul, firm and secure. Now, go forth in the power of my spirit. Live each day with purpose with passion, and with the assurance that you are deeply loved and highly valued. The plans I have for you are beyond anything you could ask or imagine. Trust in me, follow me, and you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Type Amen if you receive this and let my words guide you into the abundant life I have promised you. My precious child, as you continue this journey, know that my love for you is unshakable, unbreakable, and unwavering. Every morning that you wake up is a new opportunity, a fresh start, filled with my mercies that are new every day. You are the apple of my eye, and I have inscribed your name on the palms of my hands. No detail of your life escapes my notice, and every concern of yours is dear to my heart. You may sometimes feel overwhelmed by the challenges and responsibilities that life brings. But I say to you, do not grow weary in doing good. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest if you do not give up. The seeds you have sown in tears will one day bring forth a bountiful crop of joy. Even when it seems like your labor is in vain, know that I am using every effort, every act of faith to accomplish my purposes in your life. Take heart, my child, for I am your strength and your shield. When the road ahead seems unclear and you are unsure of the next step, Remember that I am the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path. My word is your guide, and my spirit is your constant companion. 
You need not fear the unknown, for I am already there, preparing the way for you. Trust in my provision, for I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. When you feel the weight of the world on your shoulders, cast all your cares upon me, because I care for you. Do not carry burdens that are too heavy for you, for I am here to bear them with you. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest in my presence, knowing that I am the God who never slumbers nor sleeps. While you rest, I am at work, bringing about the fulfillment of every promise I have made to you. Do not let the worries of this life choke out the joy and peace that I have given you. Instead, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, Present your requests to me, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You are not defined by your circumstances, but by who you are in me. You are more than a conqueror through him who loves you. No matter what trials you face, know that you are victorious in Christ. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is at work within you. You have been given everything you need for life and godliness through your knowledge of him who called you by his own glory and goodness. Let your heart be filled with hope, for I am the God of hope, and I have good plans for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Do not be discouraged by temporary setbacks, for they are but stepping stones to the greater things I have in store for you. Your story is far from over, and the best is yet to come. I am the author and finisher of your faith, and I will bring to completion the good work I have begun in you. When you feel isolated or misunderstood, remember that I am closer to you than your very breath. I understand your heart, your thoughts, and your deepest desires. I am the friend who sticks closer than a brother, the one who will never leave you nor forsake you. You can pour out your heart to me, for I am a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. My child, keep your eyes on me. Do not look to the left or to the right, but fix your gaze upon me, the author and perfecter of your faith. I am leading you on a path of righteousness for my name's sake. Even though you may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fear no evil, for I am with you. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I anoint your head with oil. Your cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in my house forever. This is my promise to you, my beloved. Stand firm in your faith 
knowing that I am with you every step of the way. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I hold all of your days in my hands. Let these words be written on your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Go forward with confidence, knowing that you are my child, and nothing can separate you from my love. Type Amen if you receive this, and let my peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. It is hard to imagine a time when churches did not have air conditioning, running water, cushioned chairs or pews. A church where there was a bucket of water in the corner with a dipper that everyone shared. The windows would be opened in the heat and people would crowd together for warmth in the winter. If you had to use the bathroom, you would have to make the long journey to the outhouse. Yet, with all of these inconveniences, Sundays used to be a time when people gathered at the church house to hear God's word. Many churches didn't have Sunday school or youth programs, and everyone was in the sanctuary to worship, hear God's word, and be together. Pews were filled, and I heard a lady this past weekend say she remembered when there was no more room in the church, people gathered outside by the windows and doors to hear the preacher preach the word. God was a priority. Family was a priority. People will say it was a simpler time back then. Was it? People worked hard from sun up to sun down. Most families were fortunate to have one car, and most items were handmade. Yet with everything they had to do on any given day, they made time for God and church. Unfortunately today, it seems God and church is no longer a priority in too many families. The empty pew is becoming more common in churches throughout our nation. I have heard it said, the church needs to change with the times. The church needs to cater to the people. The church needs more programs. The church... Whatever happened to the thought of the church raising disciples and ministering to the community? Whatever happened to the church being a place where people came to greet one another to share the word of God and to encourage one another in a life of holiness and righteousness? Whatever happened to people wanting to serve instead of being served? Don't look back. Of all the countless people mentioned in scripture, Jesus wants us to remember one woman, Lot's wife. Jesus simply says, Remember Lot's wife. Luke 17, 32. The only thing to remember about Lot's wife is that she looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. Looking back will get you permanently stuck in a place or season you are meant to pass through. Don't look back at the places and people that God delivered you from. Look to the future where God is leading you to. The people and things you lost may have been valuable to you, but God says, Don't look back at what I'm finished with. Don't look back at what you have lost and what is burning down. Don't look back at the mistakes you've made, for God's forgiveness is greater than any guilt. 
Don't look back at past failures, for God's grace is sufficient for your weakness. Don't look back at the hurts and disappointments, for God's healing and restoration are found in His embrace. Don't look back at missed opportunities, for God's plans for your future are filled with hope and purpose. Don't look back at the worldly distractions, for God's kingdom awaits those who seek Him wholeheartedly. Look forward because God has a perfect plan for your life, filled with abundant blessings. Look forward because God's promises never fail and His faithfulness endures forever. Look forward because in Christ you are a new creation destined for eternal joy and everlasting love. Isaac Kubvaruna Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Father, so many times I've been in the fire, and you spared me and kept me from harm. You've not allowed me to suffer at the hands of my enemy. I pray that my faith will be strengthened to that of these three Hebrew men who said, No way will I worship another god. Even if our god chooses not to deliver us, we will never bow. Teach us, God, your ways, so we will not follow other idols. The enemy is very cunning, and he knows how to draw our eye to the things of the world. Forgive me when I take my eyes off you. There is no God like you, and nothing compares to your great love. Help me to live a life of complete surrender, so that I may be used for your glory and honor. You love me so well, and I refuse to live a life that does not reflect your goodness. I refuse to live in bitterness, unforgiveness, guilt, shame, or condemnation, because I am bought with the blood of Jesus who has conquered death, hell, and the grave. Nothing can separate me from your love, and nothing is going to keep me from living a great life full of unspeakable joy. I proclaim that no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and my God fights for me. I am loved, I am valuable, and I have the Spirit of the living God living in me, and therefore I have the victory to be everything my God says I am. Amen. Father, only you have the power to make dry bones live. You give life to dead bones and give hope to the hopeless. You can call those things that are not as though they were. Your power is beyond my imagination, and your thoughts are greater than my own. There are times I struggle to understand why some prayers are answered and others are not. Sometimes you heal and sometimes you do not. Sometimes you say yes and sometimes you say no or wait. Teach me to trust, even when my heart and mind say otherwise. Help me to press into you when I'm covered in darkness. Empower me to believe when all I feel is loneliness. 
Cover me in the shadow of your wing and guide me to still waters that comfort my soul. I will not live in the shadows, but in faith will walk in the sunshine, because my God gives me everything I need to walk in joy even in the midst of adversity. I know that your plan for me is an abundant life. I give this day to you. Lead me in your peace and guard my heart as I stand on the promises of God. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the names of God in scripture is El Roy, which means God who sees me. The Lord revealed this name to a woman named Hagar in the Bible. She was an Egyptian servant who worked for a barren woman named Sarah. Sarah decided to have a child by asking her husband to sleep with Hagar. Sarah then mistreated pregnant Hagar to the point that she ran away to the desert. After the Lord sent an angel to encourage Hagar, we find these words. Thereafter, Hagar used another name to refer to the Lord who had spoken to her. She said, You are the God who sees me. She also said, Have I truly seen the one who sees me? Genesis 16.13 We're never alone because we serve a God who sees us. We can rest knowing God is never unaware of what we are going through. Elroy saw Hagar, but he didn't promise a quick fix to all her problems. He sees us, but he also sees the larger picture outside of the constraints of time. God knows when we cry buckets of tears and aren't even sure why we are sad. He celebrates victory with us when we master a new skill or forgive a difficult person. He sees us on those blah days when all we feel is numbness. He might not instantly fix every predicament we encounter, but we never have to doubt his presence we are never alone because El Roy is the God who sees. El Roy, thank you for seeing me. You know what this day has been like. You know the people who are heavy on my heart. It encourages me to realize that with a huge world of people out there, you know me individually. Bring growth in my life as I behold and believe you more. In Jesus' name, amen.